Oh, thanks, Brendan. Don't know why, but I'm, I'm extra nervous tonight, or this afternoon, or whatever you want to call it. Alrighty. Um, title for my talk is Cast Your Cares Upon Jesus. And a, f- a few things have been rattling around in my mind and uh, when I was putting this together and we, we've all got things that come up in our lives and there's times when tribulations may come in and then and there's other times in our life when things are going okay uh, and that they're just great and the, and the Lord is with us in everything that we do through these and yet it seems when things get bad is when we're actually calling out to the Lord more. It's just a natural thing. Uh, well, that's what happens with me anyway. Um, but it often can take a, a, life or a, a life event to make you stop or to make us stop and ponder on things, on in life. And isn't it amazing how these life events often come at the most inconvenient times? No one wants these things. Uh, we shouldn't just wait for these times for it to stop and, and, do, and to do these things and to seek the Lord. And if, you, if you're here right now, you, you've, you've made a choice. You've made a choice to hang around tonight. If you've joined us online, you've made a choice to stop and join online. And for those watching at a later point, you've made a choice to, to actually keep listening to this guy. Um, those that haven't chosen, they won't hear it. They've made a different choice. And it's like anything we do, we're either blissfully unaware of what's going on or we are aware of what's going on. Yet we all live these busy lives and some are busier than others, but we all make choices every single day. There's the choices that we make. Is this choice actually going to help me with my walk? Does this choice help me grow closer? And we heard today um, when Matt was speaking about some of the actions that you can take, our, our works, those important pieces of what we do, not just, or, and some of the how we do. All of these things that we can choose to do to get a closer relationship with the Lord. Are we taking the time for the important things? We all get caught up in what might seem like important stuff at the time and slowly but surely this keeps moving and other things keep creeping in and at some point these new things become normal instead of the abnormal. And we're, t- we're told in the word to, to lay up our treasures in heaven. Where are we spending more of our time? Is it on our life or is it on our walk? Is it on our relationship? Now, last week, um, my area was able to join in with a, another one. We had a seminar uh, on mental health. One part of that seminar, uh, the, the uh, presentation there was, it stood out to me, was about being a part of a community. And our fellowship is, is one of those communities. And we're, we're part of something actually quite special. And, and I... The more I speak to some of the guys at work, they, they don't have this. They've got their own little family networks, but they're not a part of something as unique as what we have. So it could be our colleagues, our school friends, our retirement village colleague, our neighbours. Whatever situation, these people that we're, that we're seeing, they, they don't have what it is that we have just in our community, let alone the spirit that then draws us in in unity. When, uh, when I get asked at work, you know, what did you do on the weekend? And I'm like, right, well, it started on Friday and I start to reel off everything that, you know, that we fit in sometimes and they just gobsmacked. It's like, what did you do? Oh, I mowed the lawn. <laughs> um, how, how busy our lives can get in, in serving the Lord and each other. Sometimes they just don't get what it means to be a, a Christian like we are. Now today I want to look at casting your cares upon Jesus and we'll, we'll turn to, I'm going to spend a, a bit of time on this scripture, it's only a little one, First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 and in verse 7. 
It's a small one. Turn to it because we're going to keep going through it. But casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Just 11 words, quite simple. But I started to look through, well, what, what can some of these other words mean? And yes, I've, I've pulled out some dictionary and we're going to go a little bit like that. But um, when we start looking at some of these words differently, and we'll look at the Amplified later, we can actually bring out and draw out some different things in just that word casting first. And the first one, I think, it's the one I probably associate mostly with is around throw force of throw forcefully in a specified direction. So to cast something away, to throw it. Another one is to cause light or a shadow to appear on a surface. So I'm, I'm casting my shadow when I stand in between something, or I'm, or I'm actually going to look at something. To cast or to direct one's eyes to look at something. Another meaning there is to cause uncertainty to be associated with something, to discard, to shape by pouring into a mould while molten. So we're casting, you know, a, a, maybe an idol that we don't bow down to. Or to cast a vote, to register. So when we look at all these different meanings, this scripture can take on several different aspects just with changing that first word. Not that I'm changing the word of God, all right? I just want to rationalise some of those thinkings of casting. Now, when I think of casting, I imagine actually casting a fishing line. Um, growing up out the shack, you know, from age four, rocks. Yes, you get snagged all the time, so you had to learn how to cast your fishing line out, past those rocks so that you could try and catch those fish. Um, or when we were out in the boat, we had to make sure that you weren't getting tangled with somebody else or in with the anchor line or the motor because dad would get cranky, all those sorts of things as a child, as you're learning how to cast and, and to, to do these things. So when I relate this to casting a fishing line, you want to cast your cares as far away that you possibly can. You don't want them floating back to you with the tide. So if I reread this scripture with some of these meanings in them, so bear with me, we're going to repeat, it's going to sound like I'm saying it over. But it's, if we forcefully throw all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So we're going to forcibly throw it. And this, this one links in with what I was saying around when you forcefully throw something. And it might be out of reluctance that you're giving something up, or it just might be, I just do not want this back, and you're going to throw it as far as you can. Um, when we try to do things through our own strength or complete reverse, we, we don't want to see it. And either way, we want to give these things to the Lord. The next one was around putting a light. So if we put a light on your cares. So put a light on all your care upon him for he cares for you. Often by, you know, if you walk into a dark room, you can't see a lot. You might stumble, you might fall. So if we put a light on something, it can be easier for us to see it. If we actually focus on it and look at it and understand it and make it seen and known by the Lord, we just want to share that. To direct or look at all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So something similar to putting a light on something, you've got to be aware of looking at your cares being aware of those things and then knowing that you have given it to the Lord because you want the Lord to assist you. Sometimes it could just be consciously aware of the things that we are doing but taking the time to direct and to look at it. Another one was to cause uncertainty with. So this can be questioning the Lord, maybe talking to him, questioning him, of creating an uncertainty within yourself that you need the Lord to help with your needs. And there's times when we think we're all right, but we're not, but we're going to hold on to that bit, and I'll get into that later. We want to discard all our cares upon him. Throw it away, stop thinking about it. We want to shape our cares upon him. And that was talking about the moulding when they're pouring pouring it in. So shape your cares by shaping and moulding our cares so that only caring for the things of the Lord 
other good things. Maybe we're too focused on those other things in life. And registering, like voting, make it known. Make your cares known to the Lord and just talking to him like you would to anybody else. So just thinking on different, that, that casting word could be different things at different times of the day, the week, the month. But there's different times where we need to refocus back on ourselves and our walk and ensure that we're on the right path. Now I've combined the next two, care and careth, because they are very linked to each other. So keep in mind all the, all the casting words. Now we'll look at care. And here we go, some nouns and some verbs. I was just talking to Vivian and David about nouns and verbs. But, um, so some nouns for care is the provision of what is necessary for the health, the welfare, the maintenance and protection of someone or something. So care. That's a long list, isn't it? Another one is to, to have serious attention or consideration applied to do something correctly or to avoid damage or risk. So taking care. And then the verb, and that's the doing word. Uh, I had to write that in brackets because I keep forgetting. Um, but to feel concern or interest and attach importance to something and to look after and provide for the needs of. So if we read the scripture again, and I'll, I'll leave casting, so... Cast all your provisions of what is necessary for your health, welfare, maintenance and protection upon him. For he is concerned and shows interest in you. You know, these, these little 11 words start taking on this different meaning when we start fully looking into what our cares are. What, what are we casting? And we cast all our serious attention to it. Not as simple as just doing it. And you might have just originally thought, well, maybe it's just the things that I worry about. And because when we look in the Amplified, it uses the word anxieties. Maybe it's just the things that concern me that I'm going to give to the Lord. The things that are causing me trouble. But when we expand it out, we start to realise that it's not just these things that the Lord has in hand for us. It's not just the things that worry us, but it's the, all the things that make our, our lives what they are. The Lord is there to lay that path and to take care of all these things. And the earlier meanings of cast will have different purposes for us on different days and at different stages of our walk in the Lord. Now, reading the same scripture... In the Amplified, now where were we? First Peter, that's on my screen, 5 verse 7. Casting the whole of your care, all of your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. All of these things that the Lord promises to do, but... The first bit's ours. The first bit's your choice. You've made a choice tonight to be here, to listen. Are you making that choice to give all those cares to the Lord, to let him worry about it? All of these things that can come up upon us. There's a similar scripture in Psalms. Turn over to Psalm 55. I'm flipping, but I've already written it down, so... Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. A couple of different words in this one. However, the one that stands out to me here as different is, is the word sustain, which means to strengthen or support physically or mentally to undergo or, or to suffer, to cause, to continue for an extended period without interruption, to uphold, affirm and, and confirm. Um, on the piano, which <laughs> I haven't played in a few months, so sorry about today, but there's, we've got a pedal called the sustain pedal and it means it will hold a note 
even though I'm not pressing it anymore, but the pedal's down and it will carry it on. Sustain us. We know that different foods sustain us in different ways. Some will get you all the way through to lunch and some don't, if you have the right breakfast. So if we, if we expand on this sustaining in this, in this scripture, and we're, we're casting our burdens upon the Lord and he will strengthen support both our mental and our physical. He'll help us to continue without interruption, uphold and affirm thee, he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Now, there's times where we do need to take care of ourselves, both naturally, mentally and spiritually, and the Lord's got us in hand, but there's different times when different aspects are going to need some different focus and at times it can be hard to hand this control over on anything or to anyone naturally let alone mentally or spiritually naturally there's a point in life when uh, people can no longer take care of themselves Um, now as I was writing this I've had some stuff happen at work this week and and it it made me remember I, I attended a forum a few years ago on Alzheimer's and dementia and it was about supporting those sufferers in the community and working in a bank you know we see some different things at different times Um, but this this um, forum was about how we can support those that are coming in and might need some different help at, at different times and it got me thinking at the time both both physically how can I help but mentally these these people and their carers all need the Lord. How do they do it without the Lord? They showed various um, videos of, of people suffering. I remember one about a bus, um, but they forgot where they were going and, or, or they're in a shop and, um, and they're on their own. So it's early stages of, of this dementia setting in and they were forgetting what they were doing and this shopkeeper just getting annoyed with them neither of their fault but just really hard times Um, working in a bank as I said we get some elderly customers coming in trying to still navigate their finances and um, or it might be a loved one that's having to take control which can be really difficult for both parties Um, at the, the same time of this forum was when my nana got assessed with some early stages of of dementia and needing to move into a nursing home. A difficult time for her to to let go of her house and her her sense of um, control. Uh, No doubt there could be some people in here that have had that, that they've either supported someone or they're going through it. These things can make you feel vulnerable, handing over control, and, and I see it in the bank and I have to sit down with people and help them go, it's going to be okay. Because money, you know, that controls everything. They can't pay bills unless you, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's these things and you see death when a, one party passes away and the other one's never done it. And you have to teach them and, and show them. This, this sense of control that we have, it might be our driver's licence. One day it will go. Um, for anyone going through it at the moment, with a family member or yourself, I, I pray for you. It's, it's a challenging time, but the Lord's here to guide us as well. The people at this forum had no choice of what happened to them. They had no understanding of hope or, or anything of the Lord. It was all natural. Yet these other people are just at the liberty of their own minds which we know can be difficult. But they're also at the liberty of these carers that don't have a direction that we do with the Lord. It can be similar to us, not just the oldies, but um, when we want to do things in our own strength, instead of trusting in the Lord, trusting that the Lord will take over this bit, just giving over. We don't want to give that last little bit, I'm just going to hold on, you do the rest, Lord, but I'm holding on this little bit here. But we have a choice. We can either hand it to the Lord or we can keep it.
Now, I'm not saying that the Lord is going to come cook and clean and do everything like that for you. You still need to do some stuff. So all you slackers out there that thinking some things need our personal touch. But those concerns, those worry, those, where's our next meal coming from if, if, if that's what you're going through? Where's my next paycheck coming from if you've lost your job? All of these things that concern us, the Lord will take care of you. The Lord wants us to put our trust in him. And in Psalm 37, verse 5, if you're writing it, don't turn there, but it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. We need to trust the things of the Lord. We can pray for the Lord to give us the ability and the willingness to hand these things over that are burdening us. Trust can be such a big thing when it comes to handing over. We often look at people we know... um, you might look at someone's situation that you, you know this person and they're going through something and how much easier it would be if they had the Lord in their life. Maybe it's a friend, a family member, a colleague. But without the Holy Spirit, they don't have the understanding that we have on what guidance they could have. If they're not part of this fellowship, not part of the community that we have, and they... At the same time, there's probably some times that we take things for granted. So it's up to us, through the Lord, to share the gospel and share our experiences with each other, to guide and be a testimony to yourself and a testimony to others to help build their trust in something that they don't or may be uncertain of. Maybe it's your own trust that you need to build Maybe that tribulation you're going through at the moment, you're not getting the answer to your prayer. And that can be, at times, I'll try and think of the right word, not horrifying, but it can be hard. When you're second-guessing everything and why am I I not getting this answer, it can be hard to remain strong and you have to walk in these doors because we're all happy Christians and I'm internally... I'm all right today, but, um, but if, if it's eating you up inside, I've got a, the hardest spot to come in is that front door. And I've shut the front side doors. So the front door, you've got to come in. But I know my God doesn't care about all of that. Well, he cares about it, don't get me wrong. Um, however you're feeling, he's here. He's here to take care of us. That's where our brothers and sisters come into it. Call them in. Share what you're going through so that they can help, so they can understand, because keeping it to yourself doesn't actually help anybody because they can't help you. And unless you know... I don't know, is anyone a mind reader? No. So those at home, there were no hands. But unless we share with each other that there's something going on, we can't help each other. Often, just even sending a message to someone saying, can you pray to me, can take that weight off because I've shared it. Sometimes that might be the hardest bit. Even though you're calling out to God, but you're keeping it within yourself. This community we're a part of, this fellowship, it's there. There's times when things are good or maybe you're a little lost. Maybe you don't know where to turn to. Turn over to Romans chapter 8. A couple of, a few scriptures to finish and wind this up. Romans chapter 8. We're here to help each other. And the experiences, and not everyone, and who was it? James today got up. You know, last place Casey wants to be is up here. I can name several dozen people. The last place they want to be is getting up here. Um, and, but to be able to share those testimonies and you know, get them one-on-one, you'll probably find out a whole lot more. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. When we don't know what it is that we need to be praying about, or you can't find the words to tell the Lord, or the right thoughts, it's okay, because the Spirit within us knows what we need. Ephesians 6, 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Both these last two scriptures have reference to praying with and for the saints. Not just praying for yourself. It's important that we pray for one another, and I know we do it at the start of our meeting, but this is more than just that. It's, you're talking to someone, I'm like, I can pray for you about that. Let's pray now. And you don't have to be next to each other. You can be hundreds of kilometres away. We can pray for each other. It's amazing to be able to ask each other for prayer when we need to. To share, as I said earlier, to share that burden that you're going through with the saints and with the Lord. For him to take over, for him to own it. One last scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Everything that we do is for God and for his glory. And everything that you look in your life, find the glory of God in it. There are so many blessings to be had. Everything we do, everything you do from this day onwards, do it to glorify God. Put him first. Cast your cares upon him because he's the one that cares for you. And I'd like to leave it there. Amen.